I was like, because I'm a mom myself, and I'm, you know, you try and separate yourself from these scenes, and it's tough, like Jaren said. But when she came up to me, I'm thinking of my own kids, just like that. And you guys, to me, mean a lot to me, and that's why, yeah, I'm pretty tough on you at times, but I care about you just as much as these guys do. Because when I get up there, usually I'm the first one there, not always, you guys are pretty much on my butt. <laughs> I have to look at everything and, and deter, you know, do I know these people, do I know, you know, and everything. So my job is to come up, look at the cars, if there's one or many, and look for other people around, you know, dispatch, you know, tell them I need more, you know, more people. If Jerry's not here with his crew yet, to advise your scouting, you know, maybe get life like you but usually, these guys are my bad pocket, thank God. Same, same with, you know, different managers. The fire is always around too. But I, I'm hard on you guys, but there's a reason why, okay? Because I don't want to have this stuff happen. Texting and driving is, is by far right now the number one reason why, you know, we're getting called out to this stuff. So, anyway, just want to let you know, it, when she came up to me and, and grabbed my arm, you know, I'm like, you know, told her where what was going on, and the state patrol officer took her to the car, and was going to transfer, <coughs> transfer her to the hospital, you know, it's tough. But, all in all, I have to separate everything, feelings aside, I do my job too. But, it's definitely difficult, because I'm grown with you guys, you know, and other people in the community here. So, it's definitely there's a toll on us. You know, we just don't go home or we go back to doing what we were doing, you know. We have to go through briefings. We have to talk to each other because it's difficult. So, keep in mind, put the phones away. I'm driving with my kids in the car, I put it away. It's not even worth it because you yourself have to watch the other people around you. I'm not worried about myself. I'm worried about everybody else. Okay? But if you can't react fast enough, then, you know, ultimately we get the hospitals. Okay? So, be smart. Okay? Because if you're going to open to do with me, people are going to get tickets.
with prom and with summer coming and graduation, it is so easy to not just text, but to look at your iPod and look at your music and think, I don't like that song. And you reach down and you put on a different one. And when you reach this way, the car goes this way. Or when you're waving at somebody, your car goes that way. Or when you're laughing and you're turning around to talk to someone in the back seat, the car goes that way. It's not just texting. It's being distracted at all. It's no matter what it is that distracts you. And I saw a lot of you and heard a number of you laughing out there. And I don't think you thought any of this was funny. I think it was because you were scared. And it made you nervous. And I hope it did. Because you know those four kids. And their friends of yours. And I hope that the next time when you're driving and you're tired or you're laughing and joking and you have four kids in the car, that you ask someone to turn down the music or you do whatever you need to do to keep your eyes on the road. Because it takes a split second. And then someone's in the morgue. So, thanks for having me be part of this today. My name is Tony Welchel, and I am the funeral director here at Johnson Funeral Home, also in Paintsville and in New London. Um, I've been part of mock car crashes for probably 10 years now, and I know this is the first one you guys have had in a while. Um, we had one in Painesville last year, New London does one uh, every few years, and so I get to speak with, with crowds of people like you guys about this um, every so often, and uh, it was pretty cool, right? I mean, you got to see the helicopter land, you got to see the cut apart a car, I mean, that was all pretty sweet. I'm on the fire department, that's what, you know, we always like to practice doing that. But we don't like to have to do it, and I'm here to tell you that it only takes one time. It takes one time you get away with texting, you get away with drinking, you get away with reaching down on the floorboard to, to pick something up, you get away with it a hundred times and it doesn't happen to you, it takes one time. It takes one time for you to reach down and to slide off the road. It takes one time to slide into oncoming traffic. And everybody in this gym, slides have changed because they all know you, everybody in here knows each other, and you're gonna be coming and talking to me. And that's no joke. I have to deal with families that deal with that all the time, and it is heartbreaking. There is no way that I can explain to you what it is like to lose a child. There is no way that I can explain to you what it is like to lose a brother or sister unless you had that happen to you. It isn't just devastating, it is life altering. Your lives are no longer the same. If you lose a child or a brother or a sister, your life from that point on, it is not the same. You can't do anything the same. The next time your parents go to school, they think of you. The next time they go to the store, the next time they go to church, the next time they leave the house, it's the first time they're doing this without you. And it's all because you made a mistake. And we all make mistakes. But if there's one thing that we can get through you today, we're not doing this today because it's fun for us. We're doing this because we want you to think about it. Just stop and think because we know that if one of you think about it, if one of you put your phone away, if one of you decide to be a designated driver or hopefully not drink at all, if one of you guys do that, it's worth it for us. Because if I don't have to meet with your families, it's worth it to me. Because that's not why I do what I do. I don't do what I do so I can help people that have lost their kids because there is no help for them. I cannot help your parents through that. There is no words that I can tell them. There is no programs that are out there that is going to make it easier for them. There's nothing that we can do. Losing a child is one of the main causes of divorce. It wrecks families. It breaks apart brothers and sisters. People go into spirals. It is the most devastating thing that a family can face is having to lose a young child. And so if you just think about it, the next time you get in the car and you get a text message, 
or your phone rings, and you just think about it, that's all we want you to do. Just think, you know what? It ain't worth it this time. Not this time. Thank you guys for paying attention. And all the Just trying to lay there and stay calm. 